So um, when did you start collecting your actual phenology data? Was it around the time that you uh, had the Nature Center built, or was all, it? All the, this during... phenology was going on during all this time okay. from these sources that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Understand, you had men that were, we had very, very good staff, very good staff, and we got them from all of the <clears throat> fish, bio, fish biologists, ornithologists, uh, botanists, some of the best in the country, Floyd Swink, I don't know if you, he worked for me for quite some time, and uh, these different disciplines brought together, they taught each other, and they, of course, were the keen observers, these are the fellows that really uh, brought in very good records as things unfolded in the spring of the year, any time of the year. Well, that's how we really, that was the fundamental or the foundation to the, the whole exercise of keeping records. And what was the purpose of keeping the records? Well, um, just, I think it's instinct, human instinct, that it's perhaps one of the foremost undertaking or, or, or interests that man had before he could even speak. Because that was, is now and always has been sign language. You're dealing with signs, not a language. And so the interpretation of that, this instinctive, I think, brought into each individual. But the interests vary greatly. Some of them have a very acute understanding of this language. And others are just incidental because it's interesting as they see the first bird of spring. And uh, so I think it's just a natural thing. Um, the highlight of our year would always be the skunk cabbage. Why is that? Uh, well, that was the first thing that would generally appear in a select spot I found down in Palis. It's called the Black Partridge Woods. It's um, sort of protected from the northwest with a high ridge. It, it may be an uh, esker, I don't know. And down in there was a nice stream that ran through there and very protected, be very comfortable in there. And uh, pretty much signs of um, Indians using it as a chipping station. So what we would do is, as a family, it, it, this is also a family thing that the kids grew up with. We would go to church and then have old clothes in the car and boots and we'd go down there after church. And uh, in the spring of the year, I, that was the highlight when the first skunk cabbage came up. So that there, and one other thing was being, probably which was universal in the headquarters was that who brought in the first completely ripe tomato. Mm -hmm. That was uh, sort of a contest. Mm -hmm. So you see, this, this, this phenology runs at all levels. And people will tell you that I saw the first petunias or whatever, dandelion was one. I, I always like to look for the first uh, roller skater and, uh, and rope jumping and things like that, you know. Boys flying kites. That's right. We saw that on one of the lists. Yeah. Yes, yeah. one of the phenology lists. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's such a broad spectrum. And uh, I think that with, with all those trained in biology, such as you are, why, it's an interesting thing just to watch. The earth is, must be a living thing because it's these living things that we watch as they progress. Mm -hmm. So uh, that too is debatable whether the earth is a living thing. But if it is or if it isn't, what we witness as the seasons unfold is evidence of the earth's progress in the, in the seasons. Absolutely. Um, have you um, have you noticed any differences over the years, like maybe with your one specific place where you see the skunk cabbage, or have you noticed that the phenology has changed at all? Well, earlier years we found that there, there can be a, a, a month's difference. 
from their parents of skunk habit. But the differences now are tremendous.